So we're going to do this number 59, y equals 7. And we said, yeah, it's a line. It's a horizontal line. But I'd like to know how, how would I write the equation in polar coordinates? Polar coordinates. And the point is, is that when I see y, I know that's equivalent to what? R sine of theta. So let's write down R sine of theta equals 7. Okay? Now, I'd like to use my graphing calculator to sketch a graph in polar coordinates. So I'm going to write R equals 7 over sine of theta because I want to get the R by itself. And so I'm going to go to my calculator here. And I'm going to press y equals. Uh, that's not what I want. If I want to graph in polar coordinates, first I need to hit mode. And mine's in degree mode right now. That doesn't really matter too much. What I have to do for sure, though, is I have to go over here, make sure that you don't have function lit up. You want polar lit up, like POL. Okay. Now when I press the y equals screen, it's going to let me input an r equation. Here's my r equation. R equals 7 divided by sine of theta. And so I'm going to put that into the calculator. By the way, some of you guys checked the back of the book. They didn't write this as the answer. What did they write? R equals 7 what? Yeah, does that make sense, though? Because cosecant theta is the same as 1 over sine. So if they wrote it that way, that's fine. Of course, if you want to put it in the calculator, there is no cosecant button. You've got to do like I'm doing here. And let me go ahead and press the graph. And if I graph it, ooh, I didn't see anything. Now, why is that? Maybe the fact that I'm in degree mode is hurting me. Let me try that again. I'm going to go to radian mode, and I'm going to press graph. Oh, much better. Okay? And... Let's just say that we better stay in radian mode, okay? I think I understand what happened there. But let's just say that you want to be in radian mode. And so you can even do this. You can hit the trace button. And if you press, say, the right or left arrow, what it'll do is it'll change values of theta. So this is 0.7853. That's actually pi over 4. I don't know if you knew that. But at pi over 4... I'm pointed right at 7, 7. When I get to pi over 2, which is about, here's pi over 2, um, I'm right around 0, 7. See, what, what theta tells you, again, is the angle you're making with the origin. And as I get increase the angle now, the y value is always going to stay the same, but the x is going to go up, and r would actually go up. Okay? This is kind of strange. And while we're at the board, why don't we look at 65 for a minute? 65, you might recognize. Do you know what shape that is? That's a circle. Because we remember from algebra class, x squared plus y squared equals r squared was the equation of a circle. What's the radius of the circle in number 65? Whatever radical 117 is, not that I know. Okay? So if you wanted to write this using polar coordinates, well, you would need to do this. X squared plus Y squared is the same as what in polar coordinates? Okay. R squared cosine squared theta plus R squared sine squared theta equals 117, although there's a faster way to do it, but I'll do it this way. And now I'm going to factor out. What's the common factor here on the left-hand side? Okay, let's take that out front. R squared times, and we have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, okay, equals 117. And what is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? Okay, so all I really have is r squared equals 117. And by the way, some of you would have gotten that from a different substitution. 
Because if you look up in that gray box, doesn't it tell you that x squared plus y squared is always the same as r squared? But this is algebraically how you show that. Okay, so that's kind of nice what Justin suggested. And now, what does r equal then? Yeah, right? Square root of 117. I guess you need plus or minus. But if you think about what that means, it means that when I graph, I don't care what theta is. All I care is that the radius of that circle is always the square root of 117. So there's my picture for 65. And by the way, you couldn't graph this circle very well on the graphing calculator. But you could graph the square root of 117 on a calculator. Of course, how big is the square root of 117? It's bigger than 10, right? So like if I do this, if I go to y equals and just type in r equals square root of, say, 117, I may not see it because my window is no good, right? I mean, I go ahead and press graph. Oh, I do see it. I see the little pieces of it. I can't see where it actually hits because it's a little bit above 10 or a little bit below 10. You guys with me? So maybe that's a, enough to get you started. Let's look at the back real quick. Well, see, this is backwards now, right? We have a polar equation, and we want to go back to rectangular coordinates. I, let me give you the one hint that will get you through most of these. I'm going to do number 86 because there's a hint that you need. You can use all those things above. But one of the big things is, is that anytime you have R, I'm kind of in trouble. It's hard for me to just take R and convert it. But there's a trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by R. So now the equation says R squared equals, and I'll write 3R sine theta. 3R sine theta. And now, R squared. I just mentioned this. What does R squared equal if I want to write it in rectangular coordinates? That's X squared plus Y squared. And now the question is, do you have any idea what we can do on the right-hand side? Three. Wait a minute, that r sine theta, what does that equal? That equals y. So now my equation is x squared plus y squared equals 3y. And you've got to go back to your college algebra, and I guess I'll ask you guys, do you know what the shape of this curve is that I'm starting to get to? Remember doing ellipses and hyperbola and all those things? Actually, this one is a very special ellipse. It's called a circle. Well, it is, because the coefficient of x squared and y squared is the same here. But yes, it has everything to do with that. And when you did those equations back in college algebra, you might remember a technique that you knew from a long time ago called completing the, completing the square. You take half the coefficient of y and square it. Let me do that over on the side as a reminder. Half of negative 3 squared. And, of course, of in mathematics means times. How do you write negative 3 as a fraction? Hello? Thank you. So what I do is I have negative 3 halves squared is going to be what? Yeah positive 9 fourths. You with me? So what I'm really going to do here is I'm going to add 9 fourths to this side and I'm going to add 9 fourths to this side. That's called completing the square. Caitlin? Zoom in a little. Make it bigger for you. Yep. I'm the one that stuck you in the back. Does that help? Zoom in a little more. Make sense? Caitlin, you with me or no? Okay. 
So I, I add 9 fourths to both sides. And now the idea is, let's see, I have x squared. This stuff here will be a perfect square binomial. Can you tell me what it's going to be? It's been a while since you guys did this stuff. What are these three terms? If you factor it, what do you get? Well, it has to be y, right? Do you think it's plus or minus? It's going to be minus. It's y minus something squared. 3 over 2 is right. Because if you took 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, you get the 9 over 4. Okay. So my final equation is this. And so this is a circle with center. Oh, what's the center here? Yeah, that's it. Zero and three halves. And what's the radius? Hmm. Well, it has to do with that. That nine-fourths, of course is r squared, right? And so it's the square root of 9 fourths, which is? Yeah, so the radius is 3 halves, just like the center is. Now that's kind of interesting, because if the center is 0, 3 halves, that's like 0, 1 and a half, right? So here's the unit circle. So, so 0, 3 halves would be right there at 1 and a half, right? That's the center. But then if the circle has a radius of 3 halves, where is it going to go through? It's going to go right through the origin, right? And so I guess that's what we're going to get. And I mentioned to you guys uh, number 20 on the homework. Um, R equals 2 sine, or no, that was a different one. But, but if you have something of this form, it turns out it's a circle. And it's a circle that's going to touch the origin. Okay, But you wouldn't know that without either having seen a lot of these, or you can work it out by changing back to rectangular. And actually, I just want to confirm this. You know, when you were in college algebra, and they wanted you to sketch a graph of this circle, you had to do it by hand. There was no way my graphing calculator could do Well, it can, but only if I had polar coordinates. See, now it's real easy. If I want to graph this circle that I just sketched by hand, what do I do? Well, I'm going to take the equation that I started with, r equals 3 sine theta, and I'm going to go ahead and graph that. So let's try that. Let's graph 3 sine theta, and let's press graph. And this is really powerful stuff, you know? And you can do some other things. You can do zoom square if you want it to really look like a circle, or you can zoom in and... Uh, and really take a look at this thing, okay? So that's, that's all nice. I would suggest when you guys are doing these problems on the back, um, please keep using the graphing calculator, right? You can, oh, there's only one of these that you can't graph with a graphing calculator. Which one? Which one can you not use the graphing calculator? Oh, I, there's something I could do to do 94. What would I do to both sides if I want to graph 94? Just take the square root, and then you can do it. Okay. What about 82? There's no R anywhere, right? And so you might think about, well, what happens there? And, and that's, that's something worth talking about. All right? I think that's enough hints for now. Um, I'm going to let you guys get back to work. You guys are doing a nice job so far. Okay? And we will, uh, we'll bring it up here again in a little while. So we're going to do question 28. This is just a, a single point. R equals 10. Theta is arctangent 3. And we want to find out um, where that is. You know, that's hard for me to even graph. Because, you know, I'm okay with 10. But I don't really know much about arctangent of 3. That, right? Isn't this the issue? This arctangent of 3 thing? That's my real issue right now. And so let me call that theta. Theta is equal to the arc tangent of 3. R is 10. Right? 
And so I had some people right away say, oh, I know the answer. My x is going to be 10 cosine of theta, and y is going to be 10 sine of theta. Those are the formulas that I've been using. Does that make sense? So if I do that, I'll have the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So for example, we need to do for the x, x equals... 10 cosine of the arc tangent of 3, and all of a sudden, doesn't this look like the, the last chapter again? Looks like what was on your exam, right? Cosine of arc tangent of 3. We had those problems. That's really what the cosine of theta is. So the point is, is that if anytime you have an inverse trig function, you can write it as a regular trig function. Tangent of theta equals 3. And let's write it as 3 over 1. And let's draw a picture. My picture, by the way, this would be in the first quadrant, really, if I wanted to draw you know, the whole thing. But what I'm picturing is that it's y over x, 3 over 1. Okay? So now the next thing is, I might want to figure out what r equals. And so r, of course, is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared. It's the square root of 10 from the Pythagorean theorem. Who's with me so far up to this point? That's not bad. So then what I'm doing, really, is I'm finding the cosine of theta. Well, you can get that from the picture. Okay? Again, x equals 10 cosine theta. You can get it from the picture. The cosine of theta is, well, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 10. Right? So I get that x is 10 over the square root of 10. Now, if you check the back of the book, that's not what they put. They wrote that the x coordinate was square root of 10. But that's because what they did is they simplified. How would you simplify this x? Okay, so let's multiply top and bottom by radical 10. Now I have 10 radical 10 over 10. Do you see where it comes from? Is that okay? If we're going to do y, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to do 10 sine of theta. But what are we going to do? What's the sine of theta? Same picture. What's the sine of theta going to be? Probably 3 over square root of 10. Bless you. And so I think you're going to get that the y coordinate of this point is 3 radical 10. Okay? So that was number 28. Okay? Do you guys have other questions, either from the worksheet? or from the homework that you'd like me to, to look at. So 94, you know, one of the issues is, I guess I can take care of r squared right away. I can say that's x squared plus y squared, right? But this sine of 2 theta, I don't have any formulas for the sine of 2 theta that are in the gray box. I do know a formula for sine of 2 theta. It's an identity, right? What do I write down? 2 sine theta cosine theta, right? And now I wish that I had a formula for sine of theta or cosine theta to change it to polar coordinates. Do I? Well... I guess I know, for example, that y is the same as r sine theta. Okay? I don't have r, though. You with me? Now, you could multiply both sides by r and get it there. Jackie's group, I'm going to show you what they suggested. I thought this was pretty cool. They said, well, hey, can you do this? Sine of theta must be equal to y divided by r. Does, does that make sense to you guys? 
So they said, okay, what we have here is we have x squared plus y squared equals 2. And then where it used to say sine theta, they wrote y over r. And then what do you think they wrote where it used to say cosine theta? x over r. And that almost works, right? I mean, I guess what they have now is x squared plus y squared is, let me write it as 2xy over r squared. The only reason it's not quite in rectangular coordinates is because of that r squared. Oh, but what could you do with the r squared? We know that's the same as what? x squared plus y squared. So, wow. So let's see what happens. We get x squared plus y squared equals 2xy over x squared plus y squared. Who would have thought you guys would ever be graphing this equation? I mean, think about this in algebra class. I guess if you want to, another way to write it is x squared plus y squared squared equals 2xy. And you can give this to any calculus student here at Lakeland, and they're going to give it right back to you. Say, I don't really want that problem. I don't know how to graph that. All right? Um, does it make sense, though? It's an algebra equation. And there's things I can do if I want to graph it. Um, what should I show you? Well, I guess, can we graph it this way? What should I type in? The original problem said r squared is sine of 2 theta. So I guess maybe I could do this. I could say square root sine, but I have to put 2 theta. Close a couple parentheses. Let's graph it and see what it looks like. Pretty cool. By the way, though, that's not the whole graph. Because there's something that I didn't do. Let me show you how to get the whole graph. See, remember that r's can also be negative. Really, if you think about it, the equation, the original equation said r squared is the sine of 2 theta. So if you're getting r by itself, you're going to take a square root, but what else do you need? You need the plus or minus, right? And so I'm going to graph negative sine of 2 theta here. And now I'll graph those together. Oh, I guess I got the same thing pretty much. Okay? It traced it again. That's what it did. Okay? You can hit the trace button if you want to see that. This is R1, but if I hit the up arrow, this is R2, and it'll just trace around. Follow? All right, what else? So let's see. 68. Y equals negative 3x squared. This one's not so fun. Well, I guess one thing I can do, I always know I can replace Y and I can replace X, right? So where it used to say Y, what are we going to write? r sine theta is equal to negative 3. And then where it used to say x squared, well, you have r squared cosine squared theta, right? Because it's r cosine theta. When you square it, you square the r and you square the cosine. Is that good so far? So I guess next... Why don't I do this? Why don't I say, we'll set it equal to 0. So I'm going to get r, well, it would be positive 3, r squared cosine squared theta. Let's see. Um, plus r sine theta is equal to 0. Oh, this is tough to figure out how the heck could I graph it. I guess one thing I could do now is this. I could factor out the common factor of R.
That's one of the nice things to do when you set something equal to zero. So what would I be left with? Well, 3r cosine squared theta plus, plus what? Sine theta. Okay. <clears throat> now in algebra class, I would have done something like this next. I'd say r equals zero or crazy mess equals zero. I used to do that in algebra class. And if you think about it, this would be boring. Right? Because what's that mean? If the radius is zero, where are you at? You're right at the origin. So let's ignore the boring part. All right? Hey, by the way, just a real quick question about the boring part. Is it true that this graph goes through the origin? Does it go through the origin? Zero, yeah, it does, right? So that's something to keep in mind. On tonight's homework, they're going to be asking you that sometime. Hey, when you graph these things, do they go through the origin? That's something to think about. Okay, so that we know that it's going to be that. But let's see how the heck could I... So can you guys get the R by itself at this point? You can, right? It just takes a little more work. You're going to subtract the sine theta. And so let's see, I get r equals negative 1, well, it would be negative sine theta over 3 cosine squared theta. I'm going to graph that in the calculator and see if, in fact, it does give me a parabola. I hope so. Let's see. R equals, let's clear this one out. So I get negative sine theta divided by, now you got to put the whole denominator in parentheses here, 3 and, I don't know, how are you going to do cosine squared? I'll do 3 cosine theta times another cosine theta. That's cosine squared. That's one way to graph it. Okay? So you, you could type something like that, or you could put cosine theta in parentheses and square it. Anyways, let's see if I indeed get the parabola that I said I would. Cool. There it is. But again, this is what I typed in. The last question, there was a triangle, and what I say, A equals 2, B equals 3, and C equals 4? Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. And I said, hey, can you guys find the angles? Say I want, and you could do it in any order. On the answer key, when I did it, I found angle uh, gamma first across from C. But if you want to find alpha, do you know what law you're going to use? Right. You're going to say cosine of alpha equals, well, then it's, I guess, 3 squared plus 4 squared minus, well, 2 times 3. Oh, no. Well, you, you'd have to solve for it. Yeah, I'm at 1045. You know what? Um, I can show you guys this uh, some other time. All right. This will take me too long for now.